Hey, can you uh, have his nurse bring pain meds if, they, if he can get them? Yeah, let me check. All right. Never saw anything. Never saw a thing. 10 milligrams of oxy. <laughs> Sergeant Parker for a year was my senior squad leader and my wingman when I was a platoon leader. It's dull. It burns, but it burns from the inside out. I remember looking forward. The next thing I remember, I'm, I was leaning back like this. Everything's dark. And it felt like, like my chin was in my chest, like when you're riding the shockwave at Six Flags. He's a person who helped me evolve and grow as much as probably anyone in my life, certainly at that point. And so when I heard that Travis was wounded, in Afghanistan, heard that it had been a roadside bomb that exploded underneath his vehicle, and that he'd broken his heel, broken some bones in his back, and that he was on his way home. Pillows, not too close. What's up? They tell me I'm going home. I was just, crap. What do I do now? You look great. I knew I was going to go visit him, and it was his idea actually to tell his story. Uh, let's go this way. I think to the right. Yeah. And this was a cool place. Before I could get released from the hospital, I had to go show proficiency in this room. This is uh, now about three months since his injury, and the idea was that by now he would be taking his first steps, walking. Thank you. The week before we got there, he and his doctor decided that he had to have another surgery. His wound just was not closing. And he came to me and said, I want to run again. You know, I don't, I like leading troops. Um, you know, I understand you guys were, you know, deployed together and you, you've seen that firsthand, but I can see it just in his spirit. And I got to know him as, you know, for his personality. I don't know if this changed that or not. You would probably know that best. Um, well, we, we came close because of his personality yeah, right. and living together and fighting together. So he's still, uh, still the same? He's, he's mellowed a lot. Okay. You know, I've had some pretty tough days where uh, I just don't want to leave the, leave the room. I just want to sit here and watch TV and that's it, which you know is not me. Yeah. When the doctor said, let's look at surgery on Friday, I, I could have done a cartwheel. I was like, let's go, let's do it. Let's do something, something, because this obviously isn't working. I got back last night. I didn't go to sleep like 2.30, 3 o'clock. I have a hard time talking to my family about the deployment. A very, very, very hard time talking about it because they just can't get it. This is this is what I talk to. All these guys are on here. This is what, this is our therapy. The first conversation I remember having with you, I was like, "Hey, I'm uh, I'm Nate." And you're like, "You know, nice to meet you." So I'm taking over a second platoon, and you go, "That's great." There's one rule: you're not allowed to change the name. And I go, "Do they usually change names?" And you go, "No, but you can't change this one because it's been that way forever." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> When I met him, I was, you know, fresh out of college, didn't really know what I was doing. Taking charge of a group of 30 soldiers, it's a terrifying and amazing experience. And he was there to sort of be a very stern kind of big brother. We conducted about 100 combat patrols, uh, got into about five or six decent sized firefights, one really large firefight that sort of still defines part of our relationship because he saved my life. I got a couple guys set up here. Kept scanning, and there's a couple more guys. And two became six, and six became 10, and 10 became 20. And everything in my soul knew it was bad. Yeah. Everything out there was bad. When we got word from our higher headquarters that we could engage this, this enemy, Travis opened fire with his Bradley, and the amount of enemy fire that came back just tore the night in half. So after about 30 minutes, we started to run out of ammunition, or we got very low. And I called on the radio, and I said to Travis, you know, I'm low on, low on ammo. And there was no hesitation. He just said, I'll be right there. Got the ammo. 
and before anybody <laughs> could say anything, I was, I was out of the turret. Yeah. I grabbed, I threw him up on top of the turret, and I jumped up, disconnected, and I was gone. And so he grabbed two of these cases and was running and lumbering across the highway with these things while people were shooting at him. And I saw tracers zooming by him, and I was just praying that nothing would hit him. I didn't, I didn't know I was getting shot at. All I knew was uh, my big gun is going down, and I got to... I gotta get ammo to him. <laughs> Looking back on it from a little bit of time and distance, I realized that if we hadn't kept firing and hitting these positions and at least keeping them from firing at everyone else, uh, there's no telling what would have happened. And uh, I will forever be grateful for him for doing that. How you doing? Hey. I'm so happy. When they said I was having surgery, you guys are coming this week, that, that Nate was going to be here. Nate knows the risk that we went through. And obviously he wasn't with me this deployment, but it's, there's no difference. The, uh, the brotherhood is there. You know, I can't, I can't thank you enough for being here. I am ready. Brother, I'll see you in the I'll morning. I'll see you in the morning. I'll be here. And it eases a lot of stress. It takes a lot of stress off. Are you excited to get it off? <laughs> I'm excited to see November roll around. Oh, okay. So we wake up. All right, buddy. I'll give you a call when we're done. All right, bye. Yes, ma'am. Good luck. All right. I was worried. I mean, one of your best friends is going into surgery. I sort of buried myself in the other work we were doing, but it was all in the back of my head. After all that he had been through and, and having to do that one more time. I'll review it all and make sure we're all straight. His wife, Kim, sent me a couple text messages that just said, he's out, you know, they're going to wake him up soon. Uh, it looks like it went well. That is seriously honest? That's the next question. Why did you come to the hospital? I had a headache. Do you want me to put that in? <laughs> to hear that it had been a success, him. that it had healed as well as it's going to heal. I mean, it's an incredible feeling. And then it was just spending time with an old friend. And then Heaven goes, I need you out of the turret. I thought, what? There's people shooting at us. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, so he's, he's shooting back. I'll yeah. <laughs> uh, see you in the morning coming out, man. Oh, dude, it's my pleasure. Love you too, brother. I knew no matter what happened, that I was going to have my buddy here with me. And that takes my mind off everything that's going on.